Welcome to another video by Dependable Concrete. In this video, I would demonstrate how I replace these three unsafe damaged steps with new and appealing bullnose steps. I'll get your price for that. Okay. Okay, and you probably want bullnose, right? The way it's supposed to be. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. And you can see they tried to, mm -hmm. they covered it up up there, so. This is the finished job. Now let's dive into the video to see how I completed these steps after pouring the concrete. This video will focus on the finishing stages of concrete step construction. For guidance on breaking and form setting, check in the description below for links to our videos that demonstrate the other stages. The steps have been set long enough for the formwork to be stripped. Stripping the forms too soon will result in the casted concrete slumping and becoming too uneven to finish. To ensure a professional finish, it's crucial that all lines and edges are straight and even. This can be achieved by patiently waiting for the casted concrete to harden sufficiently so that it maintains its shape when the forms are removed. The distinctive bullnose design I'm incorporating into these steps is a signature feature unique to Philadelphia. It's truly a Philly thing. Since my customers prefer a less white appearance for their concrete, I incorporate brown sand in the mix to seamlessly blend the new concrete with the surrounding area, avoiding a stark white finish. For my finished coat, I use a 1 to 2 mix ratio, which consists of 1 part cement and 2 parts brown sand. The bullnose edge is achieved in the casted concrete because of this round molded plastic strip that is attached to the top of the form. The bullnose plastic strip must be lubricated before pouring the wet concrete to release the cement from the plastic strip. This step prevents the casted concrete from sticking to the plastic, allowing me to easily pull the form away from the concrete without pulling the bullnose casted edge. During the finished stage, I apply a thin layer of cement, pressing it firmly into the concrete to create a strong bond. At the same time, I shape the bullnose edging of the steps using cement, resulting in a smooth, rounded finish. The durability of concrete steps can span over a half a century or even more, largely depending on the contractor's execution of this particular step in the process. Concrete steps can peel or flake due to various factors such as a poor mix design, applying an excessive amount of finished cement, or insufficiently pressing the cement into the concrete. However, the most common reason for a failed concrete step job, or any other type of concrete work, is using weakened cement that has lost its strength from adding water multiple times to wake up the cement. This happens with too much cement is mixed and the contractor is not moving fast enough to keep up with the drying cement. And the solution to this is to mix several small batches during the course of the work. This approach is especially crucial on hot days. The primary objective is to maintain a durable top coat of cement that can withstand wear from foot traffic and harsh weather conditions. The small block at the bottom of the steps often has a problem with the pitch, leading to an accumulation of water or leaves due to an inward slope. To prevent this, I ensure that there is a slight outward pitch for water drainage. All step risers should be matching in height, especially to prevent tripping. The average height of a step riser is 7.5 inches, and the most common tread width is 12 inches. The craftsmanship is shown in the corners of step finishing. It's the area of finishing which requires the most skill. It's where all the lines meet and a good finishing hand can cleanly finish these edges with a neat look. I carefully monitor the drying time of the finished coat as the thin layer of cement I apply dries relatively quickly. I consistently revisit the bull nose edging gliding the specialized tool across it at different drying stages. 
As the finishing cement dries, it becomes progressively smoother and slicker when I revisit and reapply the bull nose tool. Once again, sharp, straight, and neat corners are what distinguish expert craftsmanship from that of beginners. In Philly, the winters are brutal, and when it snows, most people go crazy with salt. Although this keeps me busy patching and replacing steps and making YouTube videos, I still recommend that people to use a safer ice melt called calcium chloride. Again, finishing concrete steps is about managing dry time. If the area I am working on is too wet, then I will return to it in a few minutes. When it comes to finishing concrete steps, the quality and aesthetics lie in the meticulous attention to small details. As demonstrated, I focus on eliminating any uneven areas, pressing the cement into the concrete, and smoothing and leveling the treads. Additionally, I even out high ripples and bumps in the risers to ensure a polished, professional appearance. In Philly, given our snowy winters, a broom traction finish is the safest option for the treads, ensuring a slip-resistant surface during the colder months. My objective is to achieve a level of craftsmanship that makes my work appear as if it was precast in a factory. There you have it. The job is successfully completed. Once the concrete dries, the color will closely resemble the appearance of this finished product. By using brown sand in the mix, the new steps will blend well with the old surrounding concrete. Please support the Penable Concrete channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing. We'll share helpful tips and tricks for your home projects and to keep you informed on what to expect when working with contractors. Click the yellow mixer icon to subscribe. Thank you.